Hello everyone and welcome to my FOB tutorial slash guide and defense guide. The basis of this tutorial is to teach you, it's also a starter guide, to teach you and how to best utilize the FOB. What are the pros and what are the cons in having an FOB? So we'll focus on, at first, the extension of Mother Base. It is possible to lose staff, but there are also some pretty big pros. Is that the fact that you don't have to spend max resources at your mother base to obtain a very high level. But there is a higher reason to get the four platforms for your FOB, just to, insecure, just to ensure better security. Security team level is significant, and you should do your best to raise it. Not only that, you should focus on getting weapons, which are for your security team. Right now I'm showing off that with very little resources you can obtain pretty high level weaponry. These are essentially the last weapons I need to research and I'll be done with it soon. Now let's talk regarding security settings. How to ensure the best security force for your base. Because this is what really determines because every time someone invades your base, they take a, there's a risk. They can lose a lot of resources to you, you gain a lot of money, and a lot of rewards. So let's go over the security settings, or security settings, regarding to ensure yourself the best security. Set, go to any of your platforms, set basics, select basic settings, and then set to the highest level. Even though that looks very expensive, it's a one-time cost. I mean, I have not lo lo noticed a loss in GMP, nor have I ever, ever gone into the red with it. And if you ever do go low with GMP, just sell resources. It's an extremely easy way of money. Now, if you're worried about losing your very high-tier staff members, simply lower the guard rank to as low as you can, and that should ensure that you don't lose any S-grade or A++ great soldiers. I have I have mine set to B, so I don't, I don't mind losing B soldiers. Not to mention they do provide some decent security, but I haven't really noticed a difference in the, uh, the levels. Now what you probably want the most is the best security soldiers, the ones with battle dresses and the steel balaclava or the steel masks. These are probably the best soldiers to use in defense. Because the battle dress absorbs trank rounds <laughs> on any part of the body. Legs, torso, hands, chest. Even parts of their head are protected against those trank rounds. It's pretty tough to take on those soldiers. And they have very little, very small weakness points. The weakness point being the mouth, the eyes, and the nose. You have to land a direct hit on that part to knock them out with a trank sniper. Unless you're using high armor piercing weapons then you don't really have to worry about it but if you kill staff members you lose level now the equipment and security device grade is pretty significant as well to ensure a higher level you have to research more equipment for your security team this is talking about pistols smgs machine guns their armor the armor is probably the most significant thing that should be upgraded first before anything else. I'm going to go over... Whenever you're in the development tree, look for the green font weapons. Anything that has green font. Some some weapons are designed for lethal. Some, some weapons are designed for non-lethal. For example, the Riot SMG. Those... Now, I'll be talking about a little later whether to choose lethal or non-lethal. But if you have to focus on getting a weapon first for lethal, research this machine gun as soon as possible. The damage output from this machine gun versus sneak peep players with sneak suits is ridiculous. I've been foreshotted by this machine gun and I would strongly suggest you to get that machine gun as a priority if you want defense. Not to mention that Research, start researching your battle dresses as soon as possible. So you're 
essentially it's not your staff doesn't get neutralized extremely easy because when your staff are wearing sneaking suits any part of the body can be shot and knocked out and they're very easy to put to sleep for the battle dress to get to the level 2 battle dress you need a materials engineer it's in one of, it's in one of the missions here let me find it very quickly yeah mission 14 simply go into that mission and fulton every single soldier on the map try not to try to do try to just go pure non-lethal fulton every single person on that map and you'll get the materials engineer and that will get you the the next level of battle dress which is pretty significant and pretty important because your security team will be utilizing that now let's talk what you should set your base to mid range, long range, or short range. The advantages I should strongly suggest that you stay with mid range. You get the advantages of both long range and close range. I'll be going over I'll be going over all categories this and tell you what are the pros and cons. Going long range will ensure more sniper positions for your base. But unfortunately, it will result in a lot less patrols walking around your platforms to find the player that's sneaking around. Because the best way to sneak in is to simply just keep crawling on the outsides of the border. And that's going to happen quite often. And having a lot of patrols will detect that and the base will go on alert, combat alert, and then there'll be action. The pros of a long range build is if you if the base goes into combat alert snipers from different platforms can pin you down really hard and the damage output is extremely high but that's if it goes into combat alert if a player comes to defend a long range sniper base then uh you can ensure that the, the, the attacker is not gonna win not by a chance Close range builds, I have not noticed them to be really that effective. Because the thing is, when it comes to close range, most time the player will be in reflex mode. And they'll use like a submachine gun or an assault rifle and they can easily take out guards that are using shotguns. Shotguns are probably more useful on platforms that are very close quarter heavy. Kind of like the support platform. Mid range, I would strongly suggest is probably the best of both close range and long range medium range will ensure you get those machine gunners that do very heavy damage assault rifles some submachine gun soldiers but the main basis the strongest soldiers you'll probably get are the, the machine gunners get them as soon as possible as for the force distri distribution get everything don't the infrared sensors may seem not useful, but they're just there so to slow the enemy down. The anti-theft devices will tell you it, where a player is actually at, and your security force will go on alert status. The whole basis of this game mode is to get your security force to go on alert status, because if once they're on alert, there's a high chance in detecting and killing the enemy. Decoys are just as are also useful not in the way thinking that it's gonna trick the enemy that's a real soldier because it's really easy to find out whether it's a real or not real soldier when you shoot a decoy it, it emits an electric field and stuns targets around it mines are useful to have claymores they give away the target and if a target panics in the middle of the platform the claymores can do significant damage what I would strongly suggest getting are UAVs UAVs are very powerful. The machine guns will scan the sides of the platform to find players sneaking around. Cameras and all these other devices are good to have. The whole point is to slow the enemy down from reaching the objective, which is the final platform. Now the question is, should you stay lethal or should you go non-lethal? Both have their pros and cons, and I'll be going over non-lethal right now. Non-lethal essentially equips your soldiers with the stun weaponry or sleep weaponry. Mostly stun weaponry. 
If they land you a couple of hits against your head, you will be knocked out. And what they will do is they won't kill you, they'll walk up to you and then Fulton you out. I'm going to strongly heavily emphasize you to not use non-lethal unless you have a wormhole, Fulton. Because let's say you're doing a support platform invasion or defense, and the player gets inside the basement of the support platform and gets knocked out. Well, your soldiers can't really Fulton him out because it's a basement. The balloon is not going to go anywhere. So basically, the attacker can just keep pressing his button, keep waking up, shoot your soldiers, and then get away with it. I mean, he will not lose. I strongly suggest you have a wormhole Fulton before you set the non-lethal. Non-lethal has other advantages as well, not to mention, like the mortars are completely different. They shoot, instead of high explosive rounds, they shoot uh, sleep rounds. And the uh, the claymores are now sleep mines. Unfortunately, when I've invaded these non-lethal base, play, other players' non-lethal bases, when I trigger a sleep mine, it does slow me down. But if I don't get, but if the base is not set on alert or combat alert, the soldiers don't care. They don't even hear the sleep mine go off. They only soldiers only really hear claymores going off. Not to mention claymores do damage. So, is non-lethal worth taking? Not as much, because your soldiers also get different armor. Instead of wearing the battle dress, which is immune to a lot of strength weaponry, it's not, uh, your soldiers will be wearing sneak suits, which are vulnerable to trank weapons, such as the trank sniper. So it's easy, it's really easy to knock them out. So I, I've had a lot of success with the non-lethal, but players that are getting more experienced with the uh, FOB infiltrations, you're better off setting to lethal. Is there's just more brute firepower than just soldiers knocking you out? Not to mention, like so, some soldiers are very slow in in actually capturing you. Like sometimes they, they might knock you out, and it takes a while for them to actually run up to you and then Fulton you out. Some players on PC, I'm not sure about PlayStation or Xbox, but on PC players can wake up very quickly and then respond quickly by shooting the guards, so stick with lethal. Before I conclude this video, I want to show you guys an example of the advantages of having these the super soldiers, or what I call them. The soldiers with the battle dresses, and the steel balaclavas. I'll show you an example into how to actually deal with them here in a second. So I was I was infiltrating my own base. This is my own mother base. And I need to find a perfect example to show you guys of how to actually deal with them. So here's your standard mech security soldier. I'll be shooting different parts of this body to show you that they're pretty much invulnerable. They're just gonna like touch upon whatever part you hit. And it doesn't really matter, even shooting the head. Shot the leg, chest, top of the head, his shoes. All parts are invulnerable. Except very small weakness points. I generally aim for the mouth because that's the biggest point you can actually hit. This guy was turning around, so I just basically shot that side for him to turn around. All of a sudden, this, these smack security soldiers are not too hard. But it, requir it does require a little bit of practice to actually get this down. Like, hitting, hitting this guy was pretty hard. I took a risk crouching, but uh, I knew I could get the shot. I'm also using this sniper in particular because he uses very little resources. Now, if, the, if this was a real base invasion, I wouldn't really kill all these guards. I would actually advance as quickly as possible to the objective. 
But this is really just a demonstration purpose and showing the weakness points of the soldier. So I'll have a more in-depth guide to make to not make this video any longer than it already is. I'll make I'll be making an infiltration guide later on. I may make I might make specific videos for for different strategies and different tactics to be used on different platforms, such as the support, R and D, the command center, and the combat unit platforms, because these are the most popular ones to attack. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.